Hey guys, it's Robin Arzon Crafts and welcome to my studio. This week we are going to continue with our quilt as you go blocks. These are the ones that I plan on putting together at the end of the series and they will become a sewing machine mat for my sewing machines in the craft room. So today we're going to do a quilt as you go string block. I decided to add a little bit of top stitching onto this one. This version, I have all of the visible quilt as you go lines. These are both made the same way, but this is the one we're gonna work on today. String blocks can be made in any size that you want. So if you're going to be making a king size quilt, you can go up to a 12 and a half inch block or even a 15, 16 inch block, whatever works for you. I've also seen this done, an entire quilt done in a string block. String blocks are a great block to do as a quilt as you go. It's also good to use up your scraps. You can put some of your smaller bits. Your center one and a couple of the ones afterwards do need to be a little bit longer depending on the size of your block. But once we start to get to the end, we can use up a lot of scraps. You can use up leftovers of triangle pieces or charm squares that we can cut on the diagonal and use on the corners. So go ahead and grab some of your scraps and let's get sewing. String blocks can be made in a few different ways. Today we're going to go with a simple quilt as you go. I'm making eight and a half inch quilt as you go blocks for a sewing machine mat. That way I can add a little color to my crafting space underneath my sewing machine. It absorbs a little bit of the sound, which really isn't that much of a problem for me. But also when I do a live stream, I can grab that mat and easily slide my machine across the table for a better view. So my blocks are going to be eight and a half inches. As we're doing a quilt as you go, I always like to make things around about an inch larger, give or take. It depends on what you're making and how much quilting you're going to be doing. Now my background fabric is just a piece of scrap fabric that I really don't care about too much. It's not going to be seen. It's not going to be the actual back of my sewing mat. Once I put all of my blocks together, I will be adding a different back to it. And I'm going to use two inch strips. It depends on the size of your block. You might want to have larger strips, maybe two and a half inch strips if you're going to do like a 12 and a half inch block. And if you're going to go smaller down to maybe a six and a half inch block, you might want to go to a one and a half inch strip. It all depends on what you're doing. Now I have made four and a half inch string blocks and I've gone down to about three quarters of an inch to an inch and it just fits in the space better. If you do a six and a half inch block, such as my quilting ruler here, and you put two inch or two and a half inch strips, it's not gonna take very many before you fill it up. So you're only gonna put your center strip and maybe two on either side, and that may work for you. Remember, this is gonna be your project and your block size, so whatever size block you wanna make, whatever with strips you wanna use, just go ahead and use that. String blocks are pretty forgiving. You can do almost anything with them. Now, since we're only making one string block, I went ahead and chose my fabrics, gave them a good press, made sure they're all two inches wide, and I cut them sort of to length. And I decided to also lay them out just to get an idea of where my strips are gonna go and how long they need to be. When I'm laying them out, I do overlap them about a quarter inch-ish because that's what our seam allowance is going to be, but I'm definitely not getting out the ruler and double checking. I just make sure that they're longer than my block because when we put them on, we're going to sew them right sides together and flip them over. So we need to make sure that it's going to cover the entire piece of batting. I am using my cotton batting that I always like to use. It's nice and thin. I just really enjoy this cotton batting when you go ahead and press on it. It presses nice. I don't have to worry about any type of polyester and if it's going to melt to my iron or anything like that. But you can really use any type of batting you'd like. When we get to the corners, they can be a little tricky. You could always use a little bit of a wider strip when you get to the end. Some people, when they do string blocks, they like to cut a square and then cut it on the diagonal, and that way they can either have the same on each end or they can use it for two different blocks. Now this piece is obviously way too big, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. I thought I would center a flower on there somewhere just to add a little bit to the end. We'll see as I'm stitching if I'm really gonna need these blocks or how big they need to be as I'm just guessing on the seam allowances here. So as I'm sewing, I'm just going to lay these out like this. 
Now, if I were making a quilt, I would just have a whole bunch of two inch or whatever width strips you're using inside a basket or a plastic bin or a paper bag if you wanna just pull it out one by one and take a chance of whatever fabric comes out. You can totally color coordinate these, choose specific fabrics. Some people like to have a solid color going down the center or a fabric that reads like a solid, whether it be a white or a black or any color actually. That way each square will always have, let's say, this, even this Dr. Seuss fabric, you can use this on all of your squares. And then when you put a quilt together, you'll get a secondary effect on the way that they all meet up and make kind of a lattice looking thing. I'm only making the one block, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to put my novelties down and just go from there. I did try to make sure I didn't have like maybe two of the blue fabrics touching each other. The cotton batting tends to cling to fabric really well, so I just gave these two a good press together so that they'll hold themselves together nicely. You can use a little spray adhesive if you want. You could put a couple pins in it. Just remember where you're going to be sewing first. Our first strip is gonna go on the diagonal, so you don't wanna put your pins right there on that diagonal strip. If you're using the same fabric on all of them and you wanna make sure everything lines up, you can fold your fabric in half just to find that center point on the end and you can line it up with the point there and do the same thing when you get down to the bottom. Just figure out where the halfway is and line it all up and then that way your lattice will be all lined up nicely when you're going. But you can also use various widths on your strips. You don't have to use all two inch strips. I could use some narrower ones or some wider ones. It's all dependent on what scraps you have and what look you're going for. If you look up string block quilts and you check them on Google or you look up them on Pinterest, you can see such a wide variety. There are various patterns. Some people will make all blue on one side and then all yellow on the other side, or they'll make the entire string block one color. You can make stars and other designs with it. There's just so many things you can do with a string block. If you needed to make a dozen quilts you can do them all in string blocks and each quilt will look differently depending on how you sew your blocks but i'm only sewing one block so it's going to be super simple i just wanted to give you guys the different options of things you can do with them so let's actually get sewing the block if you want to do some visible quilting lines on top you can go ahead and do that now i was thinking that if you were doing it in certain colors Let's say maybe you were doing the blue block. You can always use white thread or another contrasting thread and do some type of a special T-stitch down the center of any of your strings. Or you can go ahead and just do quarter inch matchstick quilting all the way through it. I would leave a little space on the ends here because we are going to be putting our neck strings on it and they're going to take up any of that space. You don't want to quilt underneath where you're going to be sewing. It's just a waste of time and thread. Now I'm just using white thread and I have white thread in my bobbin, but when I make a bunch of string blocks just to use up scraps and if I'm doing it on batting, most of the time I do mine on paper and then I remove the paper afterwards, but I use all my leftover bobbins. The bobbins that only have enough to maybe do one or two seams, if that, Yes, it's going to take time to constantly change out your bobbin, but I have a drop-in bobbin on my machine, so it doesn't take that long for me to go ahead and change it out. And if you guys have the ones that go on the side, underneath, or over here, you probably are used to doing it so much anyway, so it's probably quick for you. So it's a great way to use up the bobbins that just have a few bits on it, or maybe that really strange neon yellow thread that you had to buy for a specific Halloween project or something that you're never going to use again. It's not gonna be seen in this project the way we're sewing it. If you're using some type of a light colored fabric, something might show through if you're using a black, but for the most part, if we're using the novelty strips, things aren't gonna show. Now normally I stitch my quilts at a 2.0 stitch length. I'm gonna go up to a 2.4. You can go up to a 2.6 if you like. Of course we wanna make sure that our seams and everything is going to stay together nicely. Our strips aren't gonna come undone, but we are going through the fabric, the batting, and our backing piece, so we can go ahead and lengthen it a little bit. I wouldn't go too long because again, we do want everything to stay nice. And if we decide not to add any quilting to the rest of this block, we need to make sure that what we're doing right now holds everything together. So I'm gonna go with a 2.4 and that's going to be fine. 
when I go to put my next piece on, I have my first piece is right side up. I have it as centered as best I could. I'm not too worried since it's only going to be one block in my project. Our next piece is going to go right sides down, but we want to make sure that when we put it down so that if we flip it over, it's going to cover our batting everywhere. Now my batting, as I said, is about an inch wider than it needs to be. So instead of an eight and a half inch block, I've got about a nine and a quarter, nine and a half inch block here. So I know that if I have it, it'd be a little bit short by accident that I'm going to be trimming it so it'll be okay. But I just find it easier to make sure it's going to cover all the way. Plus my strips are a little bit longer, so that's good too. I'm just gonna line it up and using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to put my presser foot for my machine. This is where the quarter inch is. Put my presser foot right against here and I'm just gonna stitch all the way down. You can add a couple pins to it if you'd like just to hold it together especially if you're doing the solid strip down the center and you want them all to match, I think it's a really good idea to put a few pins in. Now, since our stitching went through our batting and our backing fabric, now it's considered quilting. So we've actually started to quilt our piece. I am using that extra bit of scrap backing just because it slides through the machine nicely and I want that extra little bit of structure. This is really good if you're making bags, tote bags, or zipper pouches. You're going to have that extra layer of fabric that's going to give you that extra bit of structure you want and you should not really have to use any type of stabilizer or interfacing or anything like that. So now at this point we're going to be moving our fabric over. Now you can finger press this. A lot of times if I'm just doing one small block and I don't want to keep getting up and down from my machine, I might go ahead and just use the wooden iron and finger press it. Or you can keep a small pressing mat and a small iron next to your machine. I'm going to take this over to my big steam iron. I'm going to give this a good press just to make sure it stays out of the way. But to save myself some time and some trips of getting up and down, I'm going to put my next piece on on this side. So again, when I choose to lay it down, this one's really extra long, so I don't have to worry about it, but I'm gonna make sure that when I put it down, it's going to be in the right position. If you wanna keep using your little bits on the end for crumb blocks, you can always slide it down. Just make sure you're gonna be covering up your batting all the way. And then down here at the end, when I trim it up, I will have that extra bit for a crumb, a crumb block. If I'm using leftover bobbins, anytime I stop at the end, I like to look at my bobbin. Again, it's so much easier when it's a drop-in bobbin because I can see how much thread is on there. In this instance, as we're stitching it down here, you're not going to see it. If you were putting your quilting stitches on top, you'd want to be able to complete a full long line. If on this part you're run out of bobbin thread like right here, it's going to be okay to put another one in with another color. Nobody's going to notice. But if we were doing it up here, it would be very noticeable. So I'll take this over to my iron now. I'm going to go press it both sides, and that's going to save me from only having to get up once at this point. Since I've already got my strips all pre-cut, I'm not going to worry about trimming off any of the extra. I'll get all those pieces off when I trim up the entire block. When I'm doing this on a paper backing, I will do maybe 10 blocks at a time. So I will go ahead and stitch both of these on, and then I will do it for 10 blocks. I haven't done a quilt as you go version like this for an entire quilt, but I would do the same process even if I was doing quilt as you go. I would definitely like to go with a nice assembly line. That way I'm not constantly as a jack in the box getting up all the time to go and press something. And even if you have it right next to you on the side of your sewing machine, you would be constantly stopping. So I'd rather just do a whole bunch of them at a time. I find 10 works really good for me. 20, I feel like I'm sewing forever before I get to stop, but 10 is a really nice number. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and just stitch down here, maybe do a little top stitching, about an eighth of an inch right over here, just an eighth of an inch off of the seam, and that'll give you that little bit extra quilting on top, give you something to see in a little bit of texture without having to do several lines at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch both of these down just to see what it looks like. Now I just go ahead to my next two pieces and since I have them lined up, 
this was on the right side so now i know i have my little fishies to go next remembering to always put them right sides together and lining them up along the edge quarter inch seam and then the same on this side now this one says go bananas i can decide if i want it if i put it in this way like this when I press it over, I'm not going to really see the go bananas too much. So maybe if I put it this way, I'm going to lose some of it in the next seam also. But I do have a better chance to get some of it this way. So I'm going to put it like this. Then I could take it to my iron and press up both of these. This block is a little more forgiving when you get to a certain point. After you add these two strips on, once you want to hit it with your iron, you can easily keep your iron off of the batting. Because if you're doing these two strips first, your iron can easily stay on here. Unlike some of the other ones like the log cabin, there was always a chance that our iron in the beginning could touch our batting. If you have any issues like that, you could go ahead and put a pressing cloth down and you won't have to worry about it. It'll protect your iron from the batting. This section is still a little bit large. You could take a large, maybe a charm square or larger and cut it on the diagonal and put it in there. Now I know my block is going to be smaller than this, so that might work, but I'm just gonna go ahead with what I'd already chosen and just put this down, making sure it's going to cover everywhere. Now, a lot of times I use that square here because if we're going to be trimming this up, you're going to lose a bit of it. And also when you sew your blocks together, you're going to lose it in the seam allowance there. So you might only end up with this little itty bit of a triangle, which is why a lot of people like to put a square cut on the diagonal in this section there. It's some type of a triangle. Since I'm only doing the one block, I'm really not going to worry about it. Go get these pressed. You could put your ruler on top of this now and just see where everything's gonna show up. You could put your points here on the corner and just see where eight and a half is. So you might only be getting just a little small smidgen on here. So we could always put our next piece on like this just to make sure we're gonna have enough of the fabric showing. I just checked mine with the ruler and yes, I will only have a little bit showing if I just put it on right here since I'm not looking for anything particular. So I'm just going to lay this down and give myself this extra bit over here and just trim this off after I stitch it. So my last piece will be narrower than two inches, but it's just one block and it's going to be a scrappy sewing machine mat. So I'm not going to worry about it, but I just need to make sure it's going to cover everywhere. If I put it this way, I might get a little more of the flower in. Then I can just hold up the seam allowance and don't cut through my batting and just trim that little extra bit off. That way I don't have that extra bulk underneath there. I could do the same thing here. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit to see if I can get some of that cupcake in when I stitch it. Just put that like that. Trim my flying piggies away. As you can see, I did not do my top stitching on here. You can do your entire block and then go back and top stitch it. There's nothing that... That was my cat, Miss S'moresies. There's nothing that's going to be in the way that I have to do the top stitching first. I can always do it all at the end. Just wanna make sure when I'm top stitching that I'm going from batting to batting. I don't need to go through the whole fabric there. That way I can cut these pieces off and save them for crumbs. Here's our block all stitched up. We have these fun little two lines of quilting on it, which no one's gonna see on the back. I know they're there. I can just see them now and say, oh, I like that look. I could always put another little line of stitching about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from this stitch or an eighth of an inch from the seam. And then I would have those double lines of stitching going down there. That might be fun also. Now the trim it up. Since I'm only doing one block, I can just put my ruler down, 
make sure that I'm within my batting. I could go from the back also because I can see my two points here. I can see my fabric. I can just line it up and try to put the corners and match them up. You have that line that goes down the center of most of your rulers. If you were doing this and you were having that specific center block to be a certain color, the black, white, red, whatever, you want to really take care to make sure that you're lining it up straight down the center of this line because we want it to match up all of our other blocks. You can always take one of the little hair markers, find the center point. So this is an inch and a half. So I go down to three quarters of an inch. I can draw a line with my hair marker. You can also do it with some type of a marking tool, but this way I know after I press it that that crease is just going to go away. And then when I line this up, I can put my line down the center of my ruler, like when we're doing our half square triangles, and I'll know that that's definitely right in the center so that when my next block and I have like a four of them sewn together, that these are all going to turn into an X or a diamond or whatever design you're doing. I don't really have to worry about that, but since I already have that mark, let's just go ahead and use it. I want to make sure that I have fabric all the way around. So I'm doing eight and a half inches. I want to make sure that I can see fabric all the way around. I'm going to get some of this. I will get a little bit of the cupcake in. So I can line this up. As I said, make sure if you want, you can go ahead and put some type of tape on here. Something that is low stick. I just picked this up at the Dollar Tree. There's actual tape that you can put on your ruler that's made for quilting. And just line it up. If you have a rotating mat that's going to fit the size of the block you're cutting, that's always helpful. And I'll just line it up at this side. Now I'm lining up the edges with the eight and a half inches because that's the size of my block. Whatever size block you're doing, your number is going to be different. You can always turn it. I usually do two sides, but you guys are looking over my shoulders, so it's a little bit harder. It's easier for me to just turn it. And it takes that really crazy, wild-looking string block, and it turns it into something that's much nicer and calmer looking. Again, any of these pieces, you can save them, put them in your scrap pile, put them in your crumb bin, or just toss them, whatever works for you in your craft room. And there's my eight and a half quilt as you go string block okay, and this is a really great way to use up the novelty fabrics if you have something that you might not quite enjoy maybe it's just not the fabric you like i do have narrower bits down here and here and as i'm looking at it i think i really prefer a narrower string on there so next time i might go ahead with a one and a half or even one and three quarters just that quarter inch can really make a big difference when you're putting these strings together so we did a little bit of top stitching on that one and just to show you another option i did the visible quilting like we did on that one log cabin so i have tons of matchstick quilting on here as you can see there are a lot of lines this is great for a tote bag it has a nice feel to it without it being stiff. This one is still very, very soft and pliable, where this one is just got a little bit more structure to it. I don't think I would do this version on a giant quilt. That is a lot of quilting on it and it is a lot of thread, but if that's the look you're going for, then go ahead and go for it. I do find that this is great, again, for tote bags or bags. It's good for hot pads, table runners, placemats. I like to have that little bit extra. I don't always want to have a quilt on my table, but I find that this just changes it up enough that it does no longer look like a quilt. These two blocks, while made exactly the same with the fabrics, I went with the, just the green out of my scrap bin for this one. And I just think that having all these quilting lines on it, it just adds that little bit extra where this one, like I said, it looks like someone cut up a quilt and put it on my table. This one makes it look like it needs to be on the table. It's more, I don't want to say artistic, more creative, more something. It just reminds me of maybe bamboo placemats or something like that with all that quilting. So far, we've been making a variety of quilts as you go. We have our log cabins. We've got our hexagon log cabin. 
I have extra quilting on this one. This one's regular. We've got our string blocks. I have a good variety to choose from. I think I'm going to make two separate sewing mats. I'm going to do one that has the visible quilting with the single color blocks, and then I'm going to do a crazy novelty one. So our next quilt as you go block is going to be the hexagons. Oh, you make those little hexagon flowers. You do the English paper piecing and stitch them all together and do it that way. We're going to go ahead and do that next week where we're going to make our flower. And then we're going to go ahead and just quilt it down to our block. Our code word for this week will be cupcake. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.